Hello Tolkien Geeks, it's Dan here. I'm back and I'm working on new content for you as of this week. Just a quick note, I will be back next week with a video on Tom Bombadil exploring his nature and his place in the Tolkien Legendarium. So I hope you will enjoy that. I've been in the United States of America for almost two weeks. I was there attending Mythmoot 9, which was Signum University's annual conference, uh, the ninth year that they've run it, of course. And I saw keynote speakers including Dr. Tom Shippey, Dr. Michael Drought, uh, Corey Olson, the Tolkien professor, who is known to most of you, I'm sure. I'm here to bring you another short interview with Corey. This was just a 15 minute clip, which we took actually just shortly after Signum's graduation ceremony. So. That explains why the Tolkien professor is there in his Tolkien professor superhero costume, as you'll see in a moment. So without further ado, I think I'll just play that clip for you. Hi guys, I'm here with the very casually dressed Dr. Corey Olsen. Um, you've all met him before on the channel. Um, I'm here with him in person, which is an absolute pleasure. Very I've had a excited. great time the last few days, and um, it's been good to get to know some of the other uh, Signum family, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It really is a family, and it, it really is. brings home how much of a family it is. Oh, yeah. Um, this, and this, this gathering, especially, Mythmoot, uh, it's our annual gathering, it's our big annual gathering. And since Signum University is a fully distributed, you know, totally online organization, not only are our students, studying from home but our faculty staff everybody scattered all over the world so this is it's kind of like the family reunion every year <laughs> so, somebody was just saying to me actually during the graduation that um he was going to suggest to you and i have to apologize for breaking his idea first but um perhaps have a myth mood that's all year round and for, <laughs> right. and for signum to to have like property in order right. to do that and then he thought it was like Actually, that kind of sounds like having a campus. It's kind of exactly <laughs> what a campus would be like. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. Yeah, no, but it's 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 uh, it's always so great to see each other, and, and you know, it's our, our biggest event for um, you know getting together with other uh, you know other people coming in and stuff too. So it's a great time. But yeah, we just had our graduation ceremony. We just uh, awarded uh, a bunch of master's degrees to some of our hardworking students. So I just came out of procession and. <laughs> <laughs> Hence my my highly casual attire here. There were tears at the back of the room for some, for some oh, yeah. of those. Oh course. man, it was it's always so beautiful. You get to know you know these students, many of whom are. It's a master's degree program, so it's you know it's um, you know thirty six credits. You know it's a course. It's about uh, you know uh, you know twelve different uh, twelve different modules, tw tw twelve different classes, and yeah. um, so it's 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 the kind of thing which a student could do in year to year and a half, right, mm -hmm. um, if they're going full-time. Um, but almost nobody at Signum goes, in fact, we've never had somebody who's been a full-time student their entire time through Signum. Everybody yeah. at Signum, uh, they tend, they're all people who are passionate about what they're studying, uh, people who usually this is the fulfillment of some kind of life dream, and uh, that they are, they're doing it while at the same time working full time and, and doing so many other things. So, uh, yeah. And it, some of them doing other things within Tolkien as well, right. which I didn't really realize before. I, I knew Emily Austin, but I didn't know she was a Signum student. For yes, instance. yes, like, absolutely. Um, yes, marvelous artist and, and has been studying with us exactly. now for several years. Yeah. Um, but you also had a big announcement yesterday. Yes, we did. Uh, which took me by surprise. Oh man, it's fantastic. I'm so excited. So we're launching the new Signum University Press. Uh, so we're, we're starting a publishing arm. Um, and what this means for us is, so Signum University set out to be different, right? You know, there are a lot of things about higher education. It's not like we needed to have, you know, one more university, right? But there was an opportunity. I saw an opportunity to say, you know, there's, uh, especially with, so, uh, you know, higher education, of course, nobody knows better than folks in the UK about how long higher education has been around and the, uh, the, 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 the time-honored traditions of academia, which many of which are wonderful. Um, but there are also a lot of ways in which higher education, I think, especially in America, um, has not really adapted well to the 21st century. Mm. And so if you are really thinking about education from the ground up, 
you know, as a digital online experience from the ground up, you can build it in some new ways that make things possible for the student, the online student experience that most other schools just don't do because they're still thinking in terms of their old ways, which they're kind of trying to push online, right? Absolutely. And it doesn't work out as well. The, 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 the university press is is kind of a is a staple of yeah. of higher education and, yeah. and that is something that is more traditional. So exactly, yeah, what made you go in that direction with that? Uh, well, basically, publishing companies have the same problem, right? They've been doing what they've been doing for centuries as well, right. um, and even though, of course, uh, just as many most modern universities are also doing online courses. So most publishing companies are also doing a great deal of digital publication. Mm -hmm. But like universities, publishing companies are tending to do that following in models and uh, just sort of existing within mindsets that have been formed by the circumstances of you know, paper publication for decades and centuries. Um, so it's a really fun opportunity to do publication, to do a press, um, again, from the ground up in a native digital model. Um, and so there's going to be a whole bunch of things uh, that we're going to be doing. We will be publishing books. Starting with a new book by Star yours truly. <laughs> Starting with my first book, my, my next book, yeah. So um, I, of course, published my book on The Hobbit, Exploring J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, back in 2012. Um, and it's been a while. Uh, and you published I, that? Was it HarperCollins? That was, it? well, it was Houghton Mifflin, which is the American uh, affiliate. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's uh, the... They've been the American publisher of Tolkien since The Hobbit, basically, you know, for 75 years. Um, well, goodness, 85 years now, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, 75 years at the time my Hobbit book was published. Um, but uh, anyway, it, you know, it's been 10 years now, uh, and I have never had the chance. Many people have been asking me, when are you going to publish Exploring the Lord of the Rings? Um, many people know I've been doing my ridiculously long Exploring the Lord of the Rings exhaustive uh, discussion. Of which I'm one of the only Europeans who's That's it. crazy enough to stay oh, up. In yeah, the Daniel of the is <laughs> hardcore, man. Like he comes in. I, I don't make it every week, but at I, like two thirty in the morning, or I'll well, three, more three like in the three thirty. Yeah, these days. it's true. More like three thirty these days. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, uh, and and you know stays with us for an hour and a half, two hours for our discussion. Um, but uh, anyway, so, so the book is going to be Exploring the Lord of the Rings, Volume 1. Um, that is, I, I, I intend it as a six-book series. So the first one will cover Book 1 of the Lord of the Rings. Not the Fellowship of the Ring, but Book 1, meaning uh, from the long-expected party through the flight to the fort. Because um, you may remember that ends Book 1, and then Book 2 starts with many meetings when Frodo wakes up in Rivendell. So it'll just be that first half, the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, and the idea is... We've been doing many, many hours, I think 140 hours of discussion on just book one we did. And um, so during that time, you know, thousands of observations and, you know, hours and hours of discussion. But what we never have time to do in the class is synthesize and really kind of back up and look at the patterns that emerge and, and, and the themes as they're unfolding. Um, we kind of come back to things uh, again, but we, so we do like connect the dots sort of process. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's what the book is going to be doing. It's going to be look, you know, building on all the discussions we've been having um, and you know, kind of laying out the, the patterns and themes and drawing some conclusions. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, but um, there's a lot of so we will be doing some sort of normal books, right? Like uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be publishing fiction, we'll be publishing uh, scholarship, a peer-reviewed scholarship and popular scholarship. Um, there will be many things that we publish which will be primarily digital. So we're looking at, um, you know, eBooks and audiobooks, uh, especially. I plan to have audio versions available of everything that we publish. I'm a huge audiophile. Uh, and I always roll my eyes when people will talk about a work, even something like the history of Middle Earth and say, well, nobody would want to listen to this in audiobook form. And I'm like, God, come on. Like, that's exactly what I want. I'm not a big audiobook person, but I would still advocate for it anyway. Oh, man. I, I like it's, and just for accessibility, it's so good. It's so important. Um, anyway, so we'll have audio of, of everything. But it, it's not only articles and you know short works and uh and and uh you know monographs books that we're gonna that we're gonna be publishing we also have the ability to do a whole bunch of multimedia things so i mean one of the one of the little sort of fun visions that i have for our press um i think of all of the wonderful content creators out there mm -hmm. right all the wonderful content creators 
who are you know doing just brilliant thoughtful work trying to monetize with a vision of someday going full-time in their content i'm sure you bit. could relate to this yeah. <laughs> as a concept right <laughs> um, but of course as i needn't say to you the normal routes to monetization are inefficient at best right um, and so what i would what i'm really hoping that we'll be able to do um, is to be talking to content creators um, so that we can uh, we can be a place where a content creator can publish premium content uh, and receive generous royalties in response to that so that the signum university press would could become um, a a vehicle to monetization and th I mean and just think of the the wonderful win-win situation this would be right yeah. um, uh, us being able to um, arrange for payment right uh, and this is a thing uh, you know of course everything at the Signum University Press this is a question that people ask yes everything at the Signum University Press will be behind a paywall like mm -hmm. it, you know, you, it, it will be paid there, you know, there are going to be some yeah, uh, easy subscription be, options I mean, and things every like, university does well, the same thing with but that's press. the thing like the the fact that we can collect at least some and we always you know try to be as fair as we can with pricing mm -hmm. but by collecting money for this content we can then pay people, not only our own right. press employees, which is our only goal, uh, to pay our own people, um, but then also to be able to more generously compensate. So many publication companies are based on often really dreadful exploitation of authors, artists, and other creative talent that are contributing to the works that they're publishing, um, often for, for peanuts, um, and for really, really low percentages. Yeah. Um, and we plan to do that very differently. And so again, so imagine the situation, right? Content creator who not only can create this like really high-end premium content, right? Which we can uh, market and sell through the, through the press and then pay the person generously, but by doing it through a subscription model, mm -hmm. um, we, you know, so people who are, you know, so viewers and listeners would only have to pay a modest monthly subscription to get access to the premium content. And that would enable us to pay the content creators monthly while they're creating the content, right? Um, so anyway, this, it's, there are some really, really fun new models that I think we can, we can play with and I'm looking forward to and, experimenting with. And this new Exploring the Lord of the Rings book will be the flagship for that. Exactly, well. yeah. So even with my book, which again, the, the final product is going to be a fairly normal looking book, mm -hmm. right? It'll be a, it'll be a, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have print on demand so people who want it in paper can get it on paper, uh, but it'll be, um, uh, you know, a normal audiobook and ebook as well. So the final product will be a comparatively normal book, um, right. but I'm, I'm in the middle of writing it right now. And the idea is I'm going to be releasing it as a work in progress as we go so that people can be engaged with them. So not only can you get early access, mm -hmm. um, I'll, you know, I'll write a chapter, we'll drop the chapter, people can read it and watch the book unfold, even provide opportunities for feedback. We'll have a couple different uh, sort of subscription tiers. Yep. You can just get advanced access to the book if you just want to keep up with it as it comes out. Or if you want to be more, if you want to kind of be a patron of the book and be really engaged with it, um, we have what I call the author circle, which enables you to sort of uh, I'll give like updates while I'm writing. Um, we'll have monthly meetings where we'll discuss the, each chapter. It's uh, collaborative. As we go. Yeah, it's yeah. much more collaborative. And again, this is another thing um, that I think is just such a cool opportunity that the modern publishing world does not take advantage of enough. Again, this is never how they've operated, right? They, 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 they don't have a paradigm for this. Um, but the opportunity to really have this kind of social collaborative environment to, um, to, to make the, the audience, the readers, the listeners, right, of, of the publishing house, right, not just passive recipients of content that's being transmitted to them, but actually actively engaged uh, in the process. I could easily imagine us actually trying things out this way, right? An author saying, hey, I have an idea for a book. I'm not sure if it's any good or not. Right? I'm not sure it, it, you know, where it will go. And us saying, well, let's see, 
right? Yeah. Well, let's see. And then have people, uh, you know, pe so people can be reading as it comes out and giving feedback, and um, you know, the author can be learning from that and shaping things, or maybe you know, the author and everyone's like, eh, maybe not. Let's try yeah, something. Yeah, I really else. love so, that. That's yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, that's perfect. There's an opportunity here, I think, to really change. I say, really change the publishing paradigm, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, Corey, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I know you're busy today, and um, I think we've got to let the catering staff in. I think so, yeah. Exactly. Having dinner in here soon, so um, we'll wrap this up. But yeah, yeah, awesome. it's been a pleasure. Very um, good. So glad on, you could you come. You have to come on the channel sometimes. Sure, as well. um, sure, love to. Yeah, I've had a great time. It's been good. Um, I'm, uh, I've got a few days left in America as well. I'm going down to Williamsburg now. Oh, nice, so, um, nice. Yeah, where the, the place where we pretend things are old. In yes, America. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, people keep saying to me, "Oh, a lot, lot of history down there." A lot of history from yeah. hundreds and then of they, years. And then they go, "Maybe, not, maybe not from your perspective." <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, there's a church in my hometown that's like you know as old as the last millennium. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you have. Uh, I'm, I'm sure like the your 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 corner convenience shop is probably older than the buildings <laughs> in Colonial Williamsburg. Possibly. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Very good.